Okay, welcome to a new episode of Nate's MMA Corner. I'm Nate, and if you watch my show, you're in my corner. Today's episode is a post-fight show for um, UFC uh, Fight Night Barboza versus Lee. And also, this is a combo episode, also um, some uh, update news update in the world of MMA. Uh, yeah, I meant to get this post-fight show done a long time ago, got caught up in stuff. And um, so, yeah, to keep it current, uh, throw in some um, updated uh, tidbits on the MMA world as well, give my thoughts on it. So, yeah, uh, just a quick rundown of this main card. Uh, we had a catchweight bout at 157 pounds, Kevin Lee versus Edson Barboza. Lee won TKO Dr. Stoppage in round five, and then at the co-main event, uh, we had a featherweight clash with Frank Edgar and Cub Swanson. Edgar Outbox comes once and end route to a unanimous decision. And then uh, in the heavyweight division, we had Justin Willis versus Chase Sherman, and Justin Willis won by unanimous decision. And then we had a um, middleweight clash with David Branch and Tiago Santos. David Branch got a first round knockout, uh, KO punches uh, two minutes, 30 seconds into the first round. And then we had a bantamweight clash with Aljamain Sterling versus Brett Johns. Uh, Unanimous decision 30-27 for Elgin Sterling. Then to kick off the main card, we had a lightweight clash with Dan Hooker versus Jim Miller. KO knee in the first round, uh, three minutes. No one saw uh, that quick finish coming. Plus, we always think Dan Hooker of a grappler more so than a striker, at least for me. And uh, Jim Miller is definitely, uh, as I like to say, a tough, durable veteran in the sport. So that was a very impressive win for Dan Hooker. And then you had some uh, good prelims with Corey Anderson and Patrick Cummins. Uh, yeah, this was a great card. And uh, yeah, I can't wait to see uh, where Kevin Lee goes from here. Uh, hopefully he can make weight on his next fight and definitely be in that title uh, talk mix uh, before you know it. Anyhow, um, so that's just my post fight rundown, a quick rundown of this card, and it was it was a great card. And then for breaking MMA news, um, a lot of you already know that uh, UFC signed a contract with ESPN to uh, put their uh, events on UFC uh, ESPN Plus uh, app, and it's going to have uh, exclusive live events, uh, their fight library, and a lot of fun UFC stuff to watch on there. So I'm, I was a little bit shook up on this because I didn't know what to think at first. Uh, the ESPN Plus app is going to be $4.99 and then allow you to watch the exclusive uh, fights on there. And then um, I hear rumors that uh, for additional $4.99 you get uh, the UFC Fight Pass app. So I don't know how it gets split up and all the details yet. Uh, UFC hasn't explained all the details uh, in detail <laughs> um, on this situation, but it's sounding promising. Um, I'm hoping for the best. I hope they know what they're doing, and we'll see only time. This is one of those things, only time will tell. Uh, I remember when UFC Fight Pass first hit, I was a little shook up and scared because when you, I was one of the early adopters of UFC Fight Pass and I signed up, it was like late 2013, early 2014, and they gave you a free month or two or whatever it was, and then they started charging you after that second or third month, the 9.99 month to month, and then um, they were just slowly adding the content on there and it took months well right right when right when they started charging that's when boom it got good it it got a lot well it got a lot better during the free phase it was they were just slowly adding everything on there uh, so you can kind of test out the waters and get a feel for it it didn't have um, it was missing some ultimate fighter seasons it was missing some UFC cards and yeah, it just it was real sloppy at first, but then I everyone was freaking out, and I said, hey, you know what? Though I guarantee you, once they start doing the nine ninety nine 
uh, and they start charging us, that's when it's going to have all the content we care about, or at least the majority of it, and then they'll figure it out and fix up whatever they need to from that point on. And sure enough, for the most part, they've pretty much done that. Um, I've had few uh, hiccups here and there with Fight Pass since then, but overall I like it and I recommend it. I recommend to casual fans, I recommend diehard fans because casual fans, they can go back and watch cards and then they still get uh, live content like every other month and UFC and then as well as the minor league MMA promotions like Invicta and uh, Cage Warriors and whatnot. And then you get the Eddie Bravo Challenge and then the back catalog of Strike Force and Pride. And then you got the exclusive Ultimate Fighter seasons that aired on there that a lot of people forget about, like Brazil uh, season uh, three and four, which I'm sure in Brazil aired on TV. Uh, I can't think of the channels they aired on at the moment, but I'm, I'm pretty sure they aired on TV over there. But here in the United States, it was pretty much, you want to see him get it on Fight Pass. And like the Chell Sun and Vanderlei Silva season was a lot of fun to watch. So, um, yeah, uh, there's, you know, time will tell, but it's, it's sounding promising. And the ESPN Plus app does have a bunch of other stuff on there too. So we'll see how it all turns out. But I just thought I'd uh, give you guys uh, my, two, my two cents on this whole um, ESPN Plus app situation. So hopefully things work out for the better, but we'll see. So I can't, I can't knock it. I can't say it's the greatest thing, but you know, well, it's just right now, let's hope for the best and see where it goes. Uh, so yeah, anyhow, uh, that wraps up this one and stay tuned for my pre-fight on UFC 224. And until then, see ya.